The first workshop recording on the structure of the report made reference to an outlier section. While I won't repeat what I covered in the first workshop, I did just want to remind you that the first workshop recording included more detail on how to write this section of the report, whereas the aim of this workshop is to focus on the practical working that we need to do. Before we do any analysis of data, we should consider the possibility of outliers. As we have seen during the lectures, their presence can cause numerical measures to be distorted. The idea is therefore to consider the possibility of outliers before undertaking any of the other analysis, and an early section within the report is therefore logical so as to make clear that this analysis has been included and therefore to clearly define the data set that will be used for the remainder of the report. In terms of the calculations for this report, you only need to consider the possibility of outliers for the one year returns data as this is our focus. And if you do find any outliers, you will need to then think about whether to leave them within the data set or to remove them completely such that the whole row would be deleted. So, the best way to check for outliers is to calculate the z-score for each data value and this requires that we calculate the mean and standard deviation of the data first. We can use the Excel functions of average and standard deviation to get these values for the one year returns column of data. And so we can calculate these in any of the empty cells to the right of the block of data. In Excel, remember we must indicate that we are calculating a function by using the equal symbol to start our formula. So if we type in equals average open brackets D2 to D468 close brackets and type that into say cell J1, we will get the average. And if we then type in equals STDEV open brackets D2 to D468 close brackets say into cell J2 we will get the sample standard deviation. We can then use column F to create the z-score of each one year return value. Set up your own formula to implement the z-score. So for example to get the z-score for the first one year return in cell D2 we would type equals open bracket D2 minus J1 close bracket divide by J2 into cell F2. Notice as you can see in the screen capture we put the dollar signs around the column and the row parts of J1 and J2 cell references to create what's known as an absolute reference. By including these symbols, when you cut and paste this first formula down through the F column, Excel will automatically update the D column reference so that each row refers to the correct one year return for that row, but it will leave the references to J1 and J2 fixed, which is what we want since this is where the average and standard deviation values are that we need to use in every calculation. Once we've created the formula once, it can then be copied and pasted down the column so as to get the z-score for all one year return values. And once you've copied and pasted, you can easily click on some of the other F column cells to see that the formula has done exactly what you wanted when you copied and pasted. In terms of looking at the z-score values, Remember that a z-score of more than three standard deviations above or below the mean suggests the value is an outlier. So to make looking for z-scores outside of this range more easy, block on all the columns of data from column A through to column F, then click on the sort and filter button and do a custom sort so that you can select to sort on the basis of column F your z-scores. Then it's just a matter of scanning through the column to see if you have any z-scores of more than positive 3 or less than negative 3. If you do find outliers 
and I think you might, what you've then got to think about is whether you want to remove them or whether you want to leave them in. Generally the idea is that you would remove outliers if you feel that they're going to distort the analysis, but it's also okay to leave them in if you think that they're going to provide valuable information to your analysis. So really as long as you justify your decision, it doesn't matter too much which one you pick as long as you're convinced that that is the appropriate decision for your report and you make some reference to that reasoning when you're writing up the section inside the actual written report. And please note that this process of looking for z-scores more than positive 3 or less than negative 3 is only completed once. If you do find outliers and you decide to remove them, that will change the average and standard deviation, but you do not repeat the outlier analysis process. You just go, it through, go through it the one time.